Today on our 2014 Ford Edge, we're going to be taking a look at and installing the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver, which is a Class 3 hitch, part number C13067. This is what the Kurt hitch looks like once it's installed on the vehicle. On this Ford Edge Sport, you can see that it's nicely tucked up underneath and very well hidden. All you can see is the receiver tube here, along with the round steel looped safety chain hoops. This hitch is a fairly easy installation. It bolts into place with minimal drilling required. It mounts in three locations on either side of the frame rail. It's got this nice reinforcement collar around the two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. It features a 400 pound max tongue weight capacity and a 4,000 pound max trailer weight capacity. And you'll wanna be sure to check your vehicle's owner's manual to see what your vehicle is rated for. But this hitch will do really well for any class three accessories that you may have. And you can also see that with those class three accessories, it's not very far in from the outer edge of the bumper here. So with the majority of your accessories, that should give you plenty of clearance. So you shouldn't have to worry about it making contact with the rear of the vehicle. Now I'll give you a couple measurements to assist you with your selection of hitch mounted accessories such as ball mounts, bike racks, or cargo carriers. The distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost part of the rear bumper is about five and a half inches. And the distance from the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening to the ground is 13 and three quarter inches. Now, let's go ahead and show you how to install it. Here's all the hardware that's gonna come with our kit. We've got our four fish wires right here. We've got six flange nuts. We've got four shorter carriage bolts and two longer ones, and I'll explain that during the installation when to use each. And then we've got our six spacers. So now, let's begin our installation. Now before I started the install, I placed this strap across right here, and what I put that there for is when I let this exhaust down, that's gonna help to support it so it doesn't damage it at any of the flanges up towards the front. So in order to drop this exhaust, what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of spray lubricant, and put it at the rubber hangers. And there's one in the exact same spot on the other side. So once I've put it on that one as well, I can move up here and spray some on this hanger right by the rear axle here. Once you've got them lubricated, you can take a pry bar or a pair of channel lock pliers in order to get it off of there. Just pry. And it should come right off. Do the same thing on the other side here. Now you want to be sure to grab the exhaust just so it doesn't swing too much as you're removing these. And then finally, the one up by the rear axle here. And you'll just want to gently let it down onto that strap that you put in place. Now we can take an eight millimeter and remove the three small bolts holding in this heat shield. Then you can take a flathead screwdriver, just get it up underneath the edge of that little plug there and just pry it downward there. And if it's giving you a little bit of trouble, you can grab a pair of side cutters, just kind of slide it up on either side there and pry downward. And we've also got this little push pin that's attached from the back side so we can just reach up there and pull out in order to get our heat shield out and we'll do the same thing to remove the passenger side heat shield so now we can fish wire our carriage bolts and spacers into place and we'll do so by taking our fish wire and taking the coiled end up through this hole back here and then we'll come out the end of the frame rail right here. You can take one of our spacer blocks and one of the shorter carriage bolts and thread that carriage bolt in there. And then before I feed them into place, I wanna take that spacer and move it up the wire a little bit from the bolt so they can both fit in through the end of the frame rail. And then I'll just gently pull them through and into position there. I'll grab one more fish wire and do the same through this hole right here. And 
Then I can do the same thing on the other side. Now we can take our heat shield and just roughly put it back into place so that we can see what we're going to need to cut. So it looks like we may need to just trim a hair off the end of this and then we'll need to trim that tab at the end off right there. I'll we'll take that back out and use some tin snips to do so. Once I've got the heat shield trimmed, I'll put it back up into place and I'll reinstall that push pin and loosely reinstall the center bolt there. I'm going to tighten up that center bolt just enough so it holds this up into place. So again on this one, I'll hold it up there just to see what's going to need to be trimmed. Then I can mark that. So then I can take it down and trim it as well. I can do the same with this one. Reinstall this one, not forgetting to put that little connector back in for the loom. You want to grab an extra set of hands in order to put the hitch up into place. You can use the fish wires. to guide it through the holes there. Take one of the flange nuts and get it started in order to hold the hitch up in place. Now with one bolt installed loosely on each side, what we can do is we can take this hitch and push it up to see where it would be once it's tightened in place. And it looks like we'll need to do a little bit of trimming here in order for it to not push this fascia up. So, with it sitting right there, I'm just going to take a light colored permanent marker and I'll mark some lines for me to trim along and then I'll just connect those from either point there and once I've got that trimmed, we'll see how it fits again. So after test fitting it again, See, I need to trim a little bit more off for this part to clear. That looks pretty good. So now I can get those other two flange nuts started on the two remaining carriage bolts. I can take my three quarter socket and tighten these up. I'll do that on both sides. Now that we've got these tightened up into place, these holes back here We'll be able to take a pilot drill bit and begin to drill those out. And as I gradually increase the size, I'll work up to a half inch bit. And I'll do that on both sides. Once we've got our holes drilled out, we can take the longer carriage bolts and spacers and fish wire them in through the end of the frame rail into the holes that we just drilled. And then we can put the flange nut on it and tighten it down. Once I've got all my hardware installed and tightened down, I can make sure it's torqued to the specification in the instruction manual. And I'll be sure to do that both sides. With everything torqued down on the hitch, we can get ready to put our exhaust back up into place. We'll start with the hanger up by the rear axle. Then I can move to both hangers on either side by the exhaust pipes. Once you're done replacing the exhaust, you can remove that support strap that we put there and you're ready to hit the road. And that's going to complete our look at the Kurt trailer hitch receiver, which is a class three hitch, part number C13067 on our 2014 Ford Edge.